how to go viral online and reach millions with your message. Today I am sharing the five pillars of creating viral content. And once you know this proven formula for going viral online, you'll soon be reaching millions with your message. So let me ask you a question. Do you have a desire to go viral online? Most business owners would answer, yes, of course I want to go viral. I wish I knew the secrets to going viral. But what if I told you that there is actually a formula for going viral and I'm going to share this exact formula with you today so you know when you come to create your next piece of content you know exactly what to do to make your message go viral. And towards the end of my content today I have a surprise for you that you are not going to want to miss so hang on until the end to get that. Today you will discover the five pillars of viral content, how to create content that gets shares, how to create a viral concept for your brand and how to create many content pieces from one viral concept. My name is Kath Kyle and I lead the Hustle Less Manifest More movement. I help creators and change makers manifest a massive audience and transform millions of lives by creating a magnetic movement using my proven dream business framework. And before we get started, I have a free gift for you. I have an ultimate guide to starting a magnetic movement. And in this free guide, I reveal how you too can build a tribe of millions with an online movement. Starting a movement is a fantastic way to propel your business into the limelight. And in this guide, I walk you through exactly how to do it. And in this guide, you are going to get my download, my ultimate guide to starting a magnetic movement, which walks you through the five steps that you need to take to build your tribe of millions. And you're also going to get my complete video training to walk you through the entire guide so you don't even have to read it if you don't want. And I also give you an audio version of the video so that you can learn the contents of this guide on the move in case you don't have time to read or watch the video. And you can get that by going to kathkyle.com forward slash movement guide. And there will also be a link around this content piece so you can download that. So let's get into the content today. And it is a very exciting topic today. Today we are talking about the five pillars of viral content. So there are five things that you need to do if you want to go viral online with your content. And let's start with the first thing, number one, which is to be different. Now, there is so much content online at the moment. It can be completely overwhelming the amount of stuff online. You will have noticed when you are trying to create content for your brand that whatever idea you have, you go online and somebody else has already done it. It's very, very difficult to find those gaps in the market where people haven't already filled the gaps, especially if you are in the popular niches like health, business, finance, relationships and that kind of thing. You are almost guaranteed that somebody will have posted something on your topic. And if you, if they haven't, you need to seize the opportunity straight away and go and fill that gap. But it's more than likely whatever content you are trying to post, somebody will have posted it already. So how on earth can we be different if somebody has already done what we want to do. So that is what I'm going to share with you now. What you need to do is you need to create a unique concept. Now your content may not appear different at first glance, but if you create your own concept, your unique concept very quickly when people to start consuming your content, they will discover that you have something different about you. And this is what will make your message go viral and get you shares and get you followers and grow your audience because you are different. So how do we create a different concept? So what you need to do first of all is 
absorb yourself in your niche, consume all of the content that you can possibly consume and put the solutions to the test. So say for example, that you're in the weight loss niche and you have people who are posting similar types of content to you, I would actually follow their suggestions and see what kind of results you get. Is there anything that they have suggested that didn't work very well for you? Is there anything, any gaps in what they told you to do that you found a better, a different way to do it? And what I would suggest you do is create your own framework, create your own framework around a habit around a transformational habit or a concept that is completely yours that solves a unique problem. And once you've got your own framework around your own concept, that is the thing that is completely different that nobody else can copy because you have created something which people can't copy at all. For example, when I created my very first brand and I had this brand go completely viral. Many, many pieces of my content did go viral in this brand. I created over 1000 different content pieces and lots of them went viral. And the reason is, and this is my secret sauce, this is what I did to go completely viral and I'm sharing this secret with you now. I didn't create completely different ideas for every single piece of content that I created. Yes, they were all individual. They were all my words. They were all my voice. They were all my videos. I didn't copy anybody's content. That's not what I mean. The concept for the content wasn't completely unique for most of my content, but what was unique was my concept, my framework that was a thing that was unique. And when you create a unique framework, you can create content which on first glance might appear to be very similar to other people's content. But when people start to read it, they'll re they realize that you are talking about your concept, which is unique and you can create numerous different pieces of content. Like I created over a thousand, which all pointed back to my unique concept and that is what made them all unique. So I didn't have to think about every single unique piece of content and think, how am I going to make this different? I just created the one thing that was different about my entire brand and then posted content, which was similar to other people's, but because I had a different focus, a different angle, a different concept, a different habit, a different framework, that is the thing that made me unique and made me different and made me stand out. So what was different about my first brand? What I did first of all was I really got into green smoothies. I started drinking green smoothies and I lost a lot of weight. I lost 56 pounds and I was um, pregnant. Um, while I was pregnant, I was still drinking these green smoothies. And then after I had my baby, I, had a lot, I piled on a lot of weight. I had gained almost all of that weight back again because I was just eating a lot. I also had a, my hand injury during the time and, um, couldn't, um, chop vegetables, make smoothies, that kind of thing. So I did have a break from healthy eating and gained back all this weight. So I had all this weight to lose. And when, after I had my baby, I started to drink my green smoothies which are just really like spinach and fruit and some kind of liquid like water. And I realized two things. One was they were just, um, they were not filling me up at all. They were leaving me hungry. I think um, when you are nursing your baby yourself, you burn a lot more calories, you're more hungry, you need something a bit more filling. So what I decided to do was I would have my green smoothie because it's really healthy. I had all my nutrients in there from the raw fruit and vegetables, but I also needed something more substantial. I needed a bowl of porridge. So, or you might call it oatmeal. So I would make my porridge every morning, my oats, my um, raisins, nuts, seeds, some kind of dairy-free milk and some kind of flavorings like cinnamon, that kind of thing. So I'd make my porridge, sit down with it, and then my baby would start crying. And she would do this every single day. She did not like 
me to sit down and eat a meal because um, I had to put her in her high chair or um, lying down you know somewhere else and she didn't like that she wanted me to be holding her or playing with her or doing something all the time so she used to be screaming the place down so um, one day after getting so fed up of leaving my porridge on the side just going cold not being eaten maybe grabbing the odd sp spoonful as I walked past I just thought to myself I am going to blend up my porridge in my green smoothie I'm going to put them both in the blender at the same time and then I don't know how it's going to taste but at least I would be getting the extra calories and filling myself a bit up a bit more so I blended up the whole thing the porridge and the green smoothie and that's how the green thicky was invented from a need that I had from a true need it wasn't a concept that was um, born out of just trying to be different it was just um, a need that I had to fulfill and then when I drank this green thicky it was just the most delicious thing I'd ever tasted because of the it was really thick and creamy because of the oat and because of the raisins it was really sweet and it was just way nicer than the green smoothie that I was drinking and I just decided to call it a green thicky and I created this new concept which was there were six different ingredients that went into the green thicky that created this shake which was filling but also nutritious it tasted delicious and it was also calorie counted to help you lose weight so I ended up losing all of my baby weight and getting back to my ideal weight within months of drinking these green thickies I would have them twice a day and then I decided that I was going to start a business and share this concept with other people because I thought I bet there's people out there who are really busy who want something healthy but they don't have time to even have a sit down meal they don't have time to cook and I'm going to share my recipes with them so I started off um, posting my recipes and that's that's what happened so that's how I ended up being different from everybody else out there because I had created something based on a need that I had and there was at the time this was over 10 years ago and there was nothing out there that was remotely similar to the green thicky and now you know my my brand went viral and there started being a lot of copycats as you know that's what happened when you create something new and something that goes viral is that plenty of people do copy you and unfortunately you're not so new anymore so you have to find other ways to stand out but that is what happened at the time it was very unique and very different so that was how I ended up being different from the crowd so I ended up putting out a lot of different blog posts and um, eventually I did videos as well and I created them on many different topics like on green smoothies, weight loss shakes, how to lose weight, smoothie ingredients, best diets, benefits of spinach etc etc um, which were all types of content which had been created before none of these types of content were unique but the difference was that I was talking about something unique with every single one of them which was my unique meal drink the green thicky so every single one of my blog posts mentioned my green thickies and led back to my unique concept so that is my secret sauce and that's how I make every single piece of content completely different because I always talk about my unique concept that nobody else has so that is what I recommend when it comes to being different so that's point number one so the second way the second pillar of creating viral content is to be clear so this means being simple keeping things simple so many people like to be very clever when it comes to their marketing and they get a bit too cute and too clever they create titles for their content which nobody would really understand what that actually meant so I'll use an example with you I created a blog post called the basic green thicky recipe now I have just explained to you what a green thicky is but can you imagine if I hadn't explained what a green thicky was and you were on YouTube and you just were scrolling past and you saw like green thicky recipe and you didn't know what it what a green thicky was you probably wouldn't click on it because I haven't taken you 
on a journey. I haven't explained what a green thicket actually is. This is getting too complicated and too cute and it's not being clear enough. So that is not meeting people where they currently are. If you want to attract an audience, you have to meet them where they currently are with what they currently understand, which means in your titles for your content, you have to use simple words that your audience actually understands. It's not to say that you can't sneak in the odd unique concept, but if you get too clever, it will just be confusing. And when you get confusing, what happens is when people get confused is they take no action, they just leave or they don't even click on your content to start with. So you don't want to be confusing. You want to start with the basics, take people from where they are at right now. So for example, I created a blog post called how I lost 56 pounds with the green smoothie diet. Now, as you can probably tell, that one went completely viral because it's very, very simple. It's very clear as to what this piece of content is about. Everybody knows what it means to lose weight, to lose 56 pounds, and most people know what a smoothie diet is. Not everybody would know 10 years ago what a green smoothie diet was, but that's what created a bit of curiosity, a bit of intrigue about it, because I was talking about a concept that people at the time, not everybody had heard before, but they, the, the title is clear enough that people know the kind of thing that I'm talking about. They know what a smoothie diet is and a green smoothie diet is obviously a smoothie that's green. You know, it's not too difficult to figure that out. So that is why this particular blog post title is very, very clear. And this one got over 23,000 page views. And another one of my popular blog posts was called 20 ways to make homemade meal replacement shakes for weight loss. And again, I don't mention the word green thickies in the title. I use clean, uh, clear, simple words that everybody understands. And this blog post generated over 84,000 page views. And in these, both of these blog posts, I took people on a journey from what they already understood. But when they got reading, I explained the concept of green thickies within the blog post. So if you want to attract people who would not know what your unique concept is, you can't use your unique concept in the title until you get a really big following, until you get a really big audience. And then just your social proof will be able to carry forward whatever you want to put out there. But so going back to the blog post called Basic Green Thicky Recipe, why did I create that if I knew that new, nobody knew what a green thicky was and nobody would click on it? And the reason is because not all of your content is created to go viral with people who haven't heard of your brand. You do want to create some viral content, but other, viral, other content that you create, the reason you create that is for your existing audience. You need to take people on a journey with your content. So I would lead people who had never heard of my concept with basic, simple language like weight loss smoothie. Once they started reading about my weight loss smoothie content, I would explain about green thickies and then I would have a link to the basic green thickie recipe. And I would say, this is how you get started with green thickies. And they would go and click on that. And then they would make the green thickie, they would get results, and then they would end up sharing that blog post with their friends. So I did have several of these types of content that my existing audience who already knew about my brand would want to consume and they would want to share. And to date, that basic green thicky recipe has had over 11,000 page views. And that's not from people who have just discovered me. That's from people who have already discovered me and have also been sharing it with people that they know. So that's what I recommend you do. And that's how you you're clear with your content is you know who you're talking to and what content is going to go viral. The kind of content that's going to go viral is the kind of content that you can share 
with people who have never heard of you before because you can't go viral if you only share with your existing audience. You need to reach new people and therefore you need to speak to them where they're at. The third pillar of going viral online is to be memorable. So you need to be memorable in two ways. The first thing is you need to create a memorable brand name or a memorable concept or a memorable transformational habit, some kind of concept that your brand is known for. So that needs to be memorable. And with this, I recommend that you don't necessarily use simple words because by the time you get to explaining about your unique concept and about your unique brand, you can use as many words as you like to explain it. So you don't need people to necessarily know exactly what your concept is just by the name of your concept. So I called my concept a green ficky. And it's not obvious what that actually is until I explain it. It's obviously something thick and something green, but that could be anything. So I have to explain what that thing is. But the reason why I chose this is because it creates curiosity. It's only two words. It's easy to remember. And I've used words that wouldn't necessarily be put together. So that makes it more unique. So if you use, if I said I just called it green smoothies, that's not a unique brand name because there are millions of green smoothies out there. So I had to create something different and something memorable that would stand out. So once you've got your name for your memorable concept, then you need to work out how to create memorable content. And I'm going to explain how to do it. So there are actually five ways to do it. And you can just choose one of them for each of your content, but you need to evoke one of the five senses. So we all know what the five senses are, sight, sound, touch, taste, and smell. And within each of your content pieces, you need to evoke one of these senses to make your content memorable. So with sight, that's the most obvious one and the, the easiest one to do. You can do this if you create blog posts because you can put images in there that people will remember. You can do that if you create videos, you can put things, overlay things on your videos that people will remember. You can put pictures of objects on there. So whatever your brand is about, even if it's about a concept, try and put a picture of some kind of object on there. So as you're talking, people will remember what it is that you're talking about. So for example, say you're talking about um, memory, which is a concept, you could put an image of the brain on there and that would help people to remember the concept that you are talking about because they'll associate it with the image. So that's how to use sight. If you want to use sound, you can do this with podcasts or videos. You can't really do it with blog posts or text, but did you know that the brain actually has a different compartment for remembering sound, which is separate from any other type of memory in your brain? The brain remembers sound very, very vividly and it also attaches other things to it. So if you could create some kind of catchy slogan or theme tune for your brand, then people are going to remember your brand much more easily. I had a brand or still do have a brand called Magical Life of Fruit and I will link to this within the um, content piece within the blog post. If you click on the blog post and then scroll down, I will embed one of my videos in there and you can listen to it. And I created this really catchy theme tune. I actually had somebody professionally sing it and record it and I put it on the end of all of my Magical Life of Fruit videos. And it is such a catchy tune that even though it was years ago that I created these videos, whenever my family is either talking about magical or fruit or life of fruit or anything related to magical life of fruit, one of us will break into song and start singing that theme tune because it, it was really catchy and it just sticks in your head. 
And even though I haven't mentioned that brand to my family for years, they just keep on remembering that theme tune. So it is really, really powerful if you can get some kind of sound to link with your content somehow. The third sense is touch. And this might be a little more tricky, especially if you have a digital brand because there's not many things that you need to touch. All you're touching really is your computer, your phone, your iPad and that kind of thing. But is there a way that you can bring something physical into their life? Can you send them something in the post? Can you ask them to take notes? Is there some kind of way that you can um, bring part of you and your brand into their physical reality somehow? Can you ask them to do something like making a recipe or taking an action? And that's evoking the touch. What about taste? Again, a little bit more tricky. Again, it's easy if you have a food brand, but if you don't, you could always get people to visualize tasting something, or you could send them some food in the post, send your customers some food. There is different ways to do that. How about smell? Again, a little bit more tricky, but if you have a brand, a physical product that smells, then obviously that's very easy for you but um, you could also send customers a gift of something scented in the post, or you could actually tell a story. This is a good way to evoke any of the senses. You could start telling a story like, I was walking in the rain and there was a scent of freshly cut grass and the air smelled really damp and clear. And immediately people are smelling the same smell. And then you can end that story however you like. You can talk about whatever you want, but you've started it by engaging one of the senses. So it's very, very powerful to engage the senses because this is how you get people to remember your brand when you engage their senses. So if you just engage at least one of the senses through your content, then you are going to be remembered a lot more easily. You can also engage the senses by creating metaphors. You can say, something sounds like, looks like, tastes like, smells like, or feels like this. And there are actually two other ways to create more memorable content. And one is um, to tell stories and another is to engage the emotions. And I'm going to go on and explain these in a lot more detail now. So the fourth pillar of creating viral content is to be emotional. And I'm not saying that you have to get overly emotional yourself, but you have to evoke emotion in other people while they are consuming your content. If you can get somebody to feel something, you will move people to take action and share it with somebody else because feelings create movement. When you are creating your own movement, always remember this concept. To create a movement, you have to create something moving, which then moves someone into action. I'll just repeat that. To create a movement, you have to create something moving, which then moves someone into action. And if you look at the word emotion, it stands for energy in motion. When you feel emotion, it is literally moving energy. And we need to We need people to feel emotion. Otherwise, there is no energy surrounding our content and no movement is created. So how do we know what types of emotion create the most viral content? And there have been so many studies that have been carried out as to what makes content go viral and stimulating emotions comes out on top and there are various ways to stimulate the emotions and I um, have gone over this in one of my lessons in my dream business movement course so if you want to dive deeper into how to create content which evokes emotion then go and check that out but there are so many ways to do it and it gets very very scientific so the third pillar of viral content is to be real. And by this, I mean that you need to show your own personality. You need to demonstrate that you are a real person with real opinions and real results. And a lot of content can come across very impersonal. We have all heard people recommending to us that 
we are creating content for other people. We are creating content to help people to solve a problem or to help people to entertain them. So everything that we create is for something, somebody else. And people can take this very literally and create content which says, right, here's what you need to do. Here are the five pillars of viral content. You need to do this, you need to do that, you need to do that, you need to do that. But then what they forget to do is bring some elements of their own personality into the content so that people can relate to them. So there are so many different ways to bring your personality into your content. And one of the most popular ways is to share your stories, tell stories in your content. As humans, we are drawn to stories. We love to tell stories. We love to listen to stories. When somebody starts to tell us a story, we have to know what happens at the end. So this can create feelings of surprise and joy and lots of different emotions that we want people to feel when they are consuming our content. So creating stories is one of the best ways to evoke emotion when it comes to creating content. And if you don't know how to tell stories, what I suggest you do is just when you are creating your content and you are explaining to somebody how to do something, think back in your mind, have you done it? Have you done this before? Or have, has somebody else done this? Can you tell your story or can you tell somebody else's story? Because um, I remember when I first started my Green Thickies business, first of all, I was creating blog post after blog post with just recipes. Basically, I was just being prescriptive and I was telling people what to do. Do this, do this, make this smoothie recipe, make this Green Thickie recipe do this, do this, do this. And I wasn't sharing my stories. And it was when I shared my first story, how I lost 56 pounds with the green smoothie diet, that my business absolutely blew up. And that's because as soon as people read that, they realized that I had the results that they want. And I was a real person with a real personality. I had real struggles. I was looking after a baby. I managed to make it happen. And I was explaining it in step-by-step -step detail, but through the principle of telling a story, which was very engaging. And after I created that blog post, I was getting all of these emails from people saying, I want to, have you got a product? I want to buy something from you. Do you have a diet plan? I want to follow your diet plan. And this is where my audience was really created when I shared my first story. And I realized the power in creating stories. And that's why I create so many stories now because they are so, so powerful. Like which blog post would you be more likely to believe? The blog post that just said, do this, do this, do this, or the blog post that said, that showed you that somebody else has got the same results, that said, I got these results and this is how I did it. I did step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, and this is the results that I got and they proved it to you with their results. You'd be much more inclined to follow the person who has actually demonstrated and proven that they've got the results themselves because you've related to them and you've enjoyed the story. They've entertained you. You you trust them. There are just so many powerful reasons for creating stories in your business. So I highly encourage you to always use a story. And if you are struggling to um, use stories, just um, listen back as to what I just did. I actually just told you a story. I told you the story about how I created my business. And after that, you probably understand how powerful it is to create stories now, because before that you might've been thinking, oh yeah, she's just telling me you need to do this. You need to do that. You need to write, okay, stories. Yep. Yeah, I'll think about that. I'll probably do that. But now, now that I have shared my own story with you about how my business blew up when I started sharing my stories, then that is going to make you much more motivated to start sharing stories in your own business. So I highly encourage you to do that. And another thing that I encourage you to do is use the word I in your content. Um, a lot of people say that the, the word you is the most powerful. And yes, I agree with that. We should be mostly using the word you, but if we don't also use the word I, then you don't have any authority and you're not being real and you're not demonstrating your personality in your content. Another great way to be real is to share your opinion. Be opinionated. 
don't be scared to share your opinion. Otherwise, if you don't share your opinion, you're going to be boring, you're going to be bland, and nobody is going to be interested in your content. People are not going to want to follow you. It's far better to split your audience in half and say half of them absolutely love you and half of them hate you because the people that love you will share your stuff, they'll buy everything you've got, they'll be your biggest brand ambassadors. Whereas the people who hate you, you know, it doesn't matter because they're not your people, they're not your tribe. But if you just sit on the fence and you don't engage either party, whenever people consume their content, they'll think, oh, this is boring. Next, onto the next piece of content. So you need to share your opinion so that people know that they can relate to you and you are somebody that they want to follow. For example, when I share my polarizing opinion that I don't believe that you have to work hard to get good results in your business, that is a polarizing statement. Half of the people out there who have businesses love to work hard or think that they have to work hard or they love to hustle and they want to hustle and they've been told they have to hustle and they believe it and they, they think that that's the only way. And then if they hear me saying this, they'll think I'm lying and they don't want to follow me anymore. But those people are not my tribe because that's the lessons that I've learned in my life is that I've put this to the test myself and I don't want to be somebody who feels like I have to work hard. I want to enjoy my work and I want it to be fun and easy. So I want to attract people who also want that for their own business. So I would rather polarize people and only attract the people that I want to attract by sharing my strong opinion on a topic. And I would love to share a free gift with you. I would love to give you a gift if you would share this content with someone else. If you would share this content and send me a screenshot showing me where you have shared it, I would like to give you one of my mini courses for free called Six Figure Content, which helps you create content that converts to sales while you sleep. And I currently have this course on sale, so it's a very valuable gift that I'm giving you. So I would love for you to share this content and I will give you a gift in return. So now that you know how to create content that goes viral, would you like to know how to create a tribe of millions with your message? So the best way to reach millions of people through your business is to start a magnetic movement. And a movement totally puts your business on the map and creates a massive amount of desire for your products. And I have reached multiple millions in my business by creating massive movements. And I am now revealing the secret to my method in my brand new masterclass. So what if I told you that you could create your magnetic movement in just 30 days using free, easy to use tools and get millions of eyeballs on your products? I am walking you through the exact steps to coming up with an idea for a movement that will make your business unforgettable and make your message go viral. And this masterclass is worth $77 and is called Moving Millions. And it's part of my dream business movement program. But for a limited time only, I am giving you free access to it. And the information I am sharing in this action-packed masterclass is so valuable, you are going to want to take notes notes and to get access to my Moving Millions Masterclass for a limited time only, you can go to kathkyle.com forward slash millions or you can click the link surrounding this content piece. And thank you so much for being here and helping to share my movement with the world. And now it's your turn to go and put your stamp on the world.